In this module, we will discuss the concept of uh, social work in Islam, the concept of uh, welfare in Islam. And for discussing the concept of social work in Islam, it is necessary to understand the two terms, social work and Islam. Social work means to work for the welfare of the community. And Islam, which uh, means uh, the religion of peace, the religion of uh, tolerance and patience. Uh, then we, after having the conceptual clarification of these two terms, social work and Islam, we reach a uh, refined and absolute perspective uh, of uh, welfare and charity. Islam is uh, basically a religion of humanity. Islam considers uh, serving other as a part of worship, as a great act of worship. And according to the teachings of Islam, it is only in serving the people uh, that we, we uh, shall have uh, and we can have the share in Allah's mercy. And an individual should live his life, uh, should lead his life as a well-wisher to all the people of the community, to all the individuals of the society. And an individual uh, being the member of the society should be ready to help everyone and uh, should be ready to accept everyone, accepting others uh, as uh, the part of the society in which that individual is, is living. Uh, so, Islam emphasizes uh, on the values of patience and tolerance, and this is not possible without accepting the rights of the other people, without accepting uh, our own duties as the member of the society. Um, all the things uh, uh, which uh, has been mentioned by uh, the religion Islam is based on two principles. Uh, which is uh, worship of Allah and serving to humanity. Without putting uh, uh, both of these principles into practice, there can be no true fulfillment of one's uh, own religious duties. Uh, by serving human beings on the on one hand, uh, the Muslims, uh, uh, as uh, uh, the major obligation of the religion, please their Lord, Almighty Allah, and on the other hand, they, they achieve and they get spiritual satisfaction while doing good uh, and while doing welfare for other people. Uh, and they achieve uh, spiritual satisfaction for themselves by doing the good deeds and good acts. Do, doing good and, uh, and talking in a good manner with parents, relatives, orphans, poor, is actually what Islam prescribes and appreciates a Muslim to do, to be the true Muslim. This is mandatory for every Muslim to be good with other people. And Allah mentions in Quran, do not worship except Allah, and to parents do good, and to relatives, orphans, and the needy, and speak to people good words and establish prayer and give zakah. Uh, this verse has been mentioned in chapter 2, verse 83, second para of the Holy Quran, uh, in uh, ayat 83. Islam not only glorifies and professes the oneness of Allah in the form of worshipping Him alone, but it also teaches Muslims the ways, the manners, to live and perform in a better way in a society, how to live in, uh, in a human society, Islam teaches us. That is why Islam is not only a religion, it's a deen, a code of life, and teaches us the mannerism of leading our lives in a better way for us, for, us, for ourselves and for other people as well. Allah has strongly encouraged self selflessness towards all the individuals living in a society. Therefore, Quran becomes uh, uh, its evidence as uh, 
uh, by saying, by mentioning in the Holy Quran, worship Allah and associate nothing with him. And to parents, do good. And to relatives, orphans, the needy, uh, the near neighbor, the, ne the neighbor uh, living far away, and the companion at your side, the travelers, the prisoners, the poor, and those whom uh, your right uh, your right hands possess. Indeed, Allah doesn't love those who are who are self deluding and boastful. Uh, this ayat has been mentioned in chapter four, uh, I think the verse thirty six. In other words, Allah is reminding Muslims that their worship is incomplete without helping deeds. Without helping deeds, if they are only engaged in worship, they can't be the true and complete Muslims. They are not fulfilling all the requirements of their religion, of their deen, Islam. Therefore, after having believed in Allah, that, uh, after having believed uh, after having believed in Allah, the oneness of Allah, Tawheed, and the prophets, the angels, the books, and the last day of judgment, a Muslim must translate his Iman, his faith, into the action of service to humanity, uh, into the actions of welfare for the mankind. The Prophet Muhammad on whom be Allah's peace and blessing, said, He who sleeps satiated while his neighbor goes hungry is not dear to Allah, is not a true Muslim. A Muslim has been a revered companion of the Prophet. Allah has provided a proper way to help people, and zakah is among the one by which a poor or needy gets benefited. And Allah defines the person with the noble and righteous attributes as in chapter 2, verse 177, that righteousness is not that you turn your faces towards the east or the west, but true righteousness is in one who believes in Allah, the last day, the angel, the books, and the prophet, and gives wealth in spite of having love for the wealth. But the true Muslim spends money and wealth for the welfare of other people and to help the relatives, to help the orphans and the needy and the traveler and the prisoners and those who ask for help and for freeing uh, the slaves and who establish the prayer and give zakah, those who fulfill their promises and those who are patient in poverty and uh, hardships, who tolerate the hard days, the hardships of life, and uh, who have courage and who fight during battle. Those are the ones who have been true, and it is those who are the righteous. So according to the Islamic teachings, according to uh, uh, Almighty Allah, the righteousness is not just that you turn your faces towards the east or the, or the uh, west. Islam stresses as a code of life to do all these things if we do for the welfare of the mankind, for the welfare of the humanity, then we can be the true Muslims. Uh, these verses uh, we see that uh, which present the true picture and the true concept of social work uh, in Islam. It is, however, more than a philosophical concept, but a practical draft that outlines that why, whom, and uh, who of service delivery. If we see why, why we believe, uh, why mean we believe form of worship incomplete without helping deeds. 
So why it is important to be indulged in the welfare activities? Because our deen, uh, according to our, our deen and religion, it is incomplete if we want to be true Muslims until and unless we render the welfare services for the other people and we extend help for the, help, uh, for the needy and deserving people. So, the question of why we should establish means formal social services in our communities is explained in this verse. Allah is advising us that our worship is incomplete without the helping deeds. So, after having believed in Allah, the angels, the prophet, and the last day of judgment and the holy books, we must translate our iman and faith and beliefs into actions of, uh, of welfare service to the mankind to help the other people. In fact, it is, uh, it is uh, un in incumbent, it is mandatory on believers. Uh, it is obligation on the shoulders of the believers to fulfill this duty of service to those who need their help, who are seeking help from them. Each and every Muslim is to contribute to the welfare of the society. Therefore, by establishing social services within the Muslim communities, every Muslim can indirectly participate through financial and moral support. Uh, when professionals administer social services with the support of the community at large. Then there is a question, who? The question of who is best qualified to carry out the duty of serving the community in the areas of social services is again outlined in this verse as one who believes in the unity of Allah, the last day, the angels, and in the messengers of Allah. In other words, the verse emphasizes the significance of Imane Mufassal as the defining characteristics of a Muslim, one who having believed totally um, and completely with understanding is then compelled by his belief to act upon them through service to humanity and thus they are completing uh, their duty of their faith. They are completing their faith in truth, letter and spirits. And then there is question for whom we see in these verses uh, that uh, this verse also outlines broad categories that would include those uh, towards whom these services should be directed. Let's briefly look at the categories. Uh, uh, the verse emphasizes the spent of your substance for the kin. Uh, the first category is of the kin. This would be anyone related either by blood or uh, by the marital relationship, this would be more of an individual responsibility. However, a person was unable to adequately meet the needs of his kin, he could on their behalf seek help from the community-based social service. And then another major category is of orphan. Technically, this would apply to children whose fathers have died, who have lost their fathers. In an Islamic society, the orphans then become the responsibility of the state. Uh, this is the obligation of the state to fulfill all the needs uh, of the orphans. Uh, the new Muslims who, who lose their families because of uh, the conversion must also be included in this category because uh, they may be having the lack of financial uh, resources. The, and basically, the spirit of Islamic charity would therefore dictate that we provide for these orphans by providing foster care, housing, material, and uh, uh, spiritual needs consistently, professionally, and compassionately. Uh, another category is of needy, and uh, it includes... Uh, uh, a lot of categories uh, of needy people and basically this is a broad term and should be interpreted to many who are in need. Uh, 
Therefore, a family needed counseling to resolve a conflict or a couple in marital crisis facing marital conflicts or uh, an abused spouse uh, and uh, uh, an individual who is uh, suffering from some sort of uh, harassment or uh, some sort of violence or uh, in any kind of abuse can be included in this category as well as those who are in need of financial assistance. They can be considered as needy if they are seeking help. And the situation could be of a temporary nature or uh, the, the situation can be on long-term basis. Um, basically, the Muslim community should be equipped with uh, the services, with all those welfare services that can address the needs of uh, the community people, uh, the needy people, uh, the deserving people who are seeking um, help from the social welfare agencies. Then uh, we can talk about the wayfarer, the term usually used for the traveler or uh, the transient could also apply in present day to foreign students or, or um, the workers who come to our communities on a temporary basis. Islamic social services should be prepared to serve this particular segment of uh, our community. And then another category is those who ask, anyone who asks for help and is a genuine case must be helped. Uh, we shouldn't hold it against them. Therefore, a formal mechanism must be in place in our communities where people can confidently apply for help. Everybody who is asking for help must be helped. Uh, this is the obligation of uh, the state, this is the obligation of the community, and this is the responsibility of the members of, of the society to help those who are asking for help, who are in need of help, who are requesting for help. So the society should accept uh, these needy uh, people and the, the, the people who are, uh, who are looking for help. And uh, another category is ransom of slaves. Many could say that Islam uh, eradicated slavery, therefore this is a moot point. However, if we, if we work, uh, if uh, we were to look around us, many of our Muslim brothers and sisters could qualify to apply for this category to be freed. For example, the landing fee, uh, the, the uh, Canadian government has put in place uh, is putting extreme pressure on families that cannot reunite because they cannot afford to pay it. Uh, so these kind of uh, needs uh, should also be addressed. And then how? When we are asked how are we to achieve these objectives of Islamic social services, the Quran once again gives us assistance by laying out the principles on which we can not only base our social services but through which we achieve our goals. In short, this principle uh, define a Muslim social worker and also empower and enable them to better serve their clients. So Islam provides a proper guideline for the professional social worker that how they can help and what kind of mechanism they can adopt to render the welfare services to all kind of uh, uh, the needy people, to all kind of the deserving people and the people who are asking for help. Um, regular charity, of course, uh, fosters a personality uh, that is giving and develops a character uh, that is empathetic to the needs of other communities. Where members give regular charity of all kinds, both compulsory and voluntary, benefit each other and feel responsible for each other. The Holy Prophet said, The best of all activities is the social service. If you help someone, it is uh, uh, the most noble work you do if you're working for the welfare of the people. 
in his numerous precepts and saying the holy prophet urged muslim to do good to their fellow beings to recognize rights and privacy of the neighbors and to help alleviate the suffering and hardships of the unprivileged and left behind segments of the society and uh, the victims of the circumstances uh, according to our holy prophet he who undergoes to relieve the needy uh, the desolate and the poor is one who undergoes in the service of god so if you serve uh, the the uh, the creature of the god if you help the creatures of the god it means you are helping the creator uh thus in an islamic society uh mutual help is considered a duty every muslim should be the helper and protector of every other muslim who is in need Islam raised charity to a religious duty a religious obligation and has defined its scope and uses the quran says he who believe in god do not make your alms worthless by reminding people of them or by injury islam does not forever like dependency and irresponsible arms giving or taking the prophet said uh, verily the best things which you eat are those which you earn yourself uh, so this is the best best task you do for yourself if you earn yourself it is liked by the holy prophet it is liked and appreciated in a religion to make the people self sufficient self reliant instead of uh, the parasite and the dependent the well known story of the prophet how he helped a poor man to become self sufficient through his own efforts and by selling his own goods clearly shows the islamic views on charity to make the other people self reliant self sufficient instead of making um uh, dependent and parasite on the society